Well, good evening, ladies. Uh, first of all, welcome. My name is Ayana Mack. I'm a local radio TV personality. Um, I'd like to start off by giving you all a round of applause. So please clap for yourselves because you all look beautiful. And tonight is going to be a very special evening. It's going to be an up-close personal event. I am totally going off script. My bad. But uh, a close and personal event, we're going to talk to some successful ladies that uh, not only do they look good, but they dress good, and they know what it takes, the formula for success. And so let me tell you, first of all, uh, welcome to Eloquy. Now, if you don't know about Eloquy, who doesn't know about Eloquy? <laughs> All right, well, I'll pretend like you don't know and read the script. <laughs> so Eloquy is a fashion uh, retail, uh, fashion retail stock of store for 14 plus. And uh, today we are doing a collaboration. And this evening we're gonna go on a motivational journey of advising, mingling, and celebrating these beautiful women and their accomplishments. Plus we have a shopping incentive tonight 30% of the proceeds this evening will go to Dress for Success, which is, yes, so please get your shop on. In fact, speaking of Eloquy, I have to uh, say thank you to Miss Shamika, who is the head stylist here. I usually wear red, black, and white. I usually wear blue jeans, a black t-shirt, and Converse, and she picked this out for me from the store. So thank you, Shamika for your help. A round of applause for Shamika. She brought the little turtle out of the shell. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to start off by introducing our panelists. We have, like I said, some amazing ladies here. Let's start off with uh, Shayla Ramirez, who is a, she's a panelist, a store and inventory coordinator for Dress for Success. Welcome, Shayla. <laughs> We also have Joyce Sewing right here, who is just a beautiful ball of energy. You do so many things. Not only are you the editor, the fashion editor for the Houston Chronicle, she has two celebrities, celebrity boxers that have their own Instagram pages. <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, I think she's pushing a, what, what's going on here? Which children's book. Children's yeah. books, she writes children's books. And Amazon.com, Ava the Friends. <laughs> and she also has a radio show, and you do this thing of Year of Joy. Are you still doing your Year of Joy? We're going to have to talk about uh, Joy Sewing's Year of Joy, where it is not about making sure she is living a joyful life, but she also makes sure that people around her, uh, less fortunate individuals, experience joy in different ways. So I will reserve, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then we have Shalanda Turner, who is a panelist, all as well influencer and at Shay's World. So I want to ask you, wait, did I say it right? No, it's okay. I was going to have to say it later. I knew that correction was coming. I saw the correction face. That's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I had this good pronunciation. Shazi. Shazi's World. Well, go ahead. Tell us what Shazi's World is. Okay. So uh, I'm actually an engineer by day and a fashion blogger, fashion and lifestyle blogger, and the evening kind of life, I say. Moonlighting. Uh, but Shazi's World is a, is a blog at Shazi's World. Um, actually, it's still at livelifestyle.com. And it's about fashion and lifestyle, and I cover a lot of events in the city, um, a lot of events here at the Gallery and Mall, a lot of, uh, like, I kind of cover some nerdy events, too, like I just went to Pandemic class. I don't even know what that is. Did you say it's pandemic? Like yeah, it's a comic convention. Comic yeah, it's the same day as the Beyonce concert. Yeah, same day. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> like, I, yeah. You were conflicted that day. Uh -oh. I was Beyonce. Oh, okay. I was not confused. She knew where she was going. <laughs> The right <laughs> they, you could have done both because the pandemic ended early and we all take a later. Oh, okay. So, all right. Okay, light balance. Okay, and so now I would like to introduce Miss Shanice again to these days. To the stage, I'm sorry, Shamika. Girl, I just called you Shanice because I'm thinking about your store. And, and you know, it's a lot going on. <laughs> about three, four cups of champagne in. So tonight's going to be fun, ladies. And um, you're the head stylist for Eloquy. And tell us a little bit more about this wonderful store. Okay, at Eloquy. Eloquy, a plus is never minus. <laughs> It's a company run by women. 
The leadership team is predominantly women, and they have several female investors, including the Female Founders Fund that exclusively invests in female-led businesses. We also have countless female leaders among our clients, and we are proud to support and celebrate them, not only through their fashion, but via programs like Spotlight Series, similar to the one that you are to add today. It is important to us to use our stores as a space to champion all women, and we are so excited to have such impressive women like all of you join us here on tonight. And remember, the other week, we have style and substance. <laughs> Oh, wow, yeah. A voice for radio, yeah. don't you? Yes. Nice. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so going back to the script a little bit, um, and thank you, Shamika, again. Um, tonight we're going to discuss how women are thriving in their careers and throughout all different in industries. We're also going to talk about how women are often put in a box. I love how, I love the way you look and, and you're like, I'm an engineer by day. And then we get, boom. By night. <laughs> you know, I, I love that all of us are in these different fields and we kind of just want to walk through our experiences and share an audience. If you have questions, I don't even, I wish I, I wish everybody had a name tag. I hate calling you audience. I wish I could just, you know, call you by your name. But if you have a question, just raise your hand or throw something at one of them and um, we will know that you want to be heard. I was, jo that, I was joking about throwing something. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to start off by talking about women in all industries, and we want to let each one of you share, uh-oh, share what industry you're in, and also, I'm loud, so I'm good. I mean, what we can still check, check. You. Oh, okay, yeah. So we want everyone to share what industry they're in and uh, various roles you've held thus far. So who wants to start off here? Boom! <laughs> so I am the inventory and merchandising coordinator at Just for Success Houston. My role entitles, well, it's basically like I oversee the donations of the warehouse and I get to help with suiting of our clients, which is amazing. And I'm actually very new in my career. I've only been there for four months, but it's been very, very good. Four months, very fun. And I'm looking forward to what's still coming. Can you tell, is everyone familiar with Dress for Success? Yes. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure everyone knew. I have one person that looks like, what's that? Okay, <laughs> just, whisper, just whisper to me, blink four times. I just moved here, It's okay, it's okay. Can you share a little bit about what Dress for Success is yes. about? So Dress for Success is a nonprofit organization. We're actually all around the country, all around the world. And we help suit women, um, not just the suit though, we provide um, very different workshops that will apply to all types of women and all types of different backgrounds, and it's at no cost to them. Women in need. Women in need. So, um, and then you? Hello again. Uh, actually, I'm a very big fan of Just for Success. I've actually done a couple events with them over my lifetime of blogging. Um, so it's, it, I really appreciate that organization and what they do. Um, so I'm going to kind of focus a little bit more on the engineering side of me because um, that's a little bit more of me working in a male-dominated industry. And I like to wear my hair like this to work, like my silver hair. And I still wear a silver hair to work as an engineer. So um, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from Bucknell University. I'm not from here, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, but I've been here about nine years now, and I've been working in the industry for about <clears throat> 10 years. <clears throat> so yeah, I started off as a uh, process production engineer, I worked in a couple plants, and then I became a pipeline project engineer, and I was doing that for about five years. And now I'm a project engineer too at my current facility. Uh, basically there we just run improvement projects at our plant and it could be anything from installing new pumps to building a parking lot so we're just kind of we do all the projects there so I've just been in these engineering roles since I graduated and you know I've seen you forever and I never knew what, I knew she was an engineer but I never knew which one yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. all right now, Ms. So, same question. Um, yeah, so I'm the fashion editor for the Houston Chronicle. I have been in the job, uh, <laughs> I know, <laughs> a long time. <laughs> uh, and um, I'm a journalist by uh, trade, so that's what people ask me. I had somebody, I was at an event for Kendra Scott last night, and she said, are you a blogger? And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I do blog, but um, I'm a journalist by trade. So I have been, um, I, I, I came out of the womb wanting to be a, a journalist and work at a newspaper, actually. So if you don't know, the Houston Chronicle is a newspaper. A lot of people, I mean, I have to tell people that now, you know, um, and I do print and online and video and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm covering everything from um, fashion, like an event here, to uh, something with maybe a celebrity or, or even everyday fashion or even, even dog fashion. I even do that. Uh, <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Proud so, owner of two boxes. So, <laughs> are you going to whip out your phone yet? <laughs> and she has a chihuahua. Yeah. Will, what did you say? Your chihuahua has yeah. yeah. your goats. <laughs> yeah. And I also write about I write about fashion, but it's kind of expanded as um, you know as we uh, kind of take it in different directions. And I also write about fitness, uh, lifestyle issues, uh, children's books. And just, I have just started writing about animal rescue efforts. Of course. So yeah, after Hurricane Harvey, I did. So yeah, so, yeah that, that's my story. Who inspired you to work within the industry that you're in? Definitely my mom. <laughs> she is also. <laughs> stand up, mom. Stand up, stand up, stand up mom, so everyone can see. Mom is here. So she's actually also a client of Just for Success, so she would always tell me like, as soon as you turn 18, you need to go and you need to be involved and you need to know who Just for Success is and what they do. And so she was definitely like a big influencer, like she really opened my eyes to who Just for Success is and what they do for all types of women, so definitely. We love you, mommy. <laughs> Um, mine's a little interesting. Uh, uh, looking at me, I'm not. I'm still not really sure how I ended up in engineering. Uh, sometimes I'm uh, just a little like, how oh, is this my field? But um, I really like chemistry. So again, my background I'm a chemical engineer. Um, and when I was researching what I wanted to do when I grow up, like when I was in high school, I went from being a movie director to business accountant to I just all over the place. And somebody told me chemical engineers make a lot of money. So I got really excited about that. And so I researched it a little bit more and um, I was like, this is cool. I could either do that or chemistry, but I wanted to do a little bit more less lab stuff. So I was like, let me go into chemical engineering and here I am um, a few years later. But I would say uh, throughout my career, just meeting the different women and like, like, especially at in college, because I didn't, I didn't really, to be honest, I didn't really know what chemical engineers did. Not a lot of people do, unless like until you get into the classes. So I didn't know what was going on, and I was like, oh, this is what we're gonna end up doing. This is kind of cool. I like this. So uh, I ended up really liking it. I actually started off as a business major when I when, when I got accepted to college, and I switched in to chemical engineering uh, after my first semester. So. Most people go the other way; <laughs> they switch out of engineering. <laughs> wow. So from movies to fashion blogs, again, I'm, and that's why I have my blog because I still get to talk about all the other stuff that I still love. That's awesome. Do they know about your blog? Like, do people at work yes. follow you? Yes, they do. Uh, they know about my blog, and it's, it's pretty funny. I've got a, a couple of my good colleagues that are really supportive and stuff. Um, and sometimes they'll ask me, like, you know, what I'm doing in the blog world today. So yes, they, they I'm not. A, they all know. <laughs> and who inspired you? Um, well, I think probably, since I've always wanted to be a journalist, I, I think I had people along the way who kind of helped nurture that. Um, one was uh, an un unlikely person. I went to St. Agnes Academy, so um, there was a little nun with the hunchback, and she had coffee breath, and she seemed like she was probably about 100 years old when I was in high school. Um, her name was Sister Hilary Beck. And so she's the one who really kind of got me really focused on it as a career. I mean, I knew I was good in writing, and I knew that I loved, you know, telling stories and being involved in the news, but she's the one who got me applying for scholarships and, um, and kind of got me along on that way. And then since that, I've had other women who, and Nancy Levicki has been a mentor of mine, so I've had other people who's had a dress for success, other people who've kind of nurtured me on Really cool. So since we're talking about mentors, what is a piece of advice that one of your mentors has given you that has really stuck with you? So um, Nancy and Lauren Levicki, they are pres our president and vice president. They've just always 
taught us to just stay humble, to remember, you know, who we're doing it for and why, and just to work hard, to essentially be like the um, I've had a few mentors that have given me advice. Um, to be honest, I kind of really appreciate the advice I get from the other female engineers that I've worked with over the years because there's just not as many of us and it's still a pretty um, male-dominated industry. So actually one of my favorite mentors was one of my first bosses at my old company. Her name was Erin and she just kind of really took me under her wings. She gave me a lot of advice. She told me to just kind of stay true to yourself. Um, realize you might have to work a little bit harder because I mean honestly, these we kind of still do in this industry a little bit. Um, so just kind of realizing like, it's a lot different for us now as women engineers and it was for like probably back in the, like the 50s or the 60s or you know, so it's a lot better, but there's still like this element of like, you, we feel like we have to do a little bit more to be received, so, so I appreciate it. So time. work hard. Work hard. Work hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I've, I think I've had so many great women in my life who've given me little nuggets of things that kind of guided me along the way, but one in particular was Susan Taylor, who I have known since I was in college. Um, she's had a, uh, she started Essence Magazine, um, many people know her, and, um, and I have been fortunate to meet her like every decade of my life almost. I met her in, in high school and then in getting, you know, almost like every five to ten years I would meet her. And, um, and she always remembered me, and I happened to be in New York at one point for Fashion Week, and I was at the Red Red Rooster, which is a red restaurant in Harlem, and she and I was feeling real kind of drained from work and just feeling not appreciated. Yeah. And she looked at me. She said, "Are you ready to fly?" This was about six years ago, and she asked me to apply to be editor in chief of Essence Magazine. Wait a minute! I didn't know that about yeah. you. Yeah. Wait, what's going on here? Yes. And you said yes. So, and I went through the process. Uh huh. And um, I went through the process and. And it was an uh, interview, Skyping, all that kind of stuff. At that point, I was really feeling physically ill. Um, and so by the time I was halfway during the process, I ended up double over in pain at home. And so what I, and it was a long journey back to work. I was off for several months. And I remember sending her a note saying, I regret that I have to pull out of the running for, F, for Essence Magazine. And I was looking at my phone because I was, I pulled, I was pulling up what she said to me what she wrote to me, and I have to read this. The Holy Spirit lays the body down when your body and mind and soul need to rest. God does bring us to whatever is needed to awaken us. Self-care is all of our lesson to learn well. Always in divine order, take good care, dear joy, sending love and light, Susan. Wow. wow. So, so great. That now it, it makes sense why the magazine is so successful still in a day and age when they're like print. Print can't make it. Well, when you have women like that running a business, mm -hmm. you can soar. That's really, that's really, don't be trying to make me cry. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so since we're talking about bumps in the road, that leads us to our next uh, few questions. Uh, let's discuss the moments where you hit bumps in the road and how you were able to move past it, like how, what was your motivation, your motivational force, or who was that person that like, gave you that key piece of information that you needed to hear to help you push through? How do you deal with the speed bumps? Really, I, I think it just comes from like my family, like there's no giving up, there's no stopping, you have to keep going. If something comes up, you can't be stuck, you have to think about what you're gonna do to get out of that situation versus just staying there and looking around being stuck. So, you gotta keep pushing. What did your grandmother used to say when little babies <laughs> fall on the floor? This is the funniest thing ever. We were talking before <laughs> we started the panel and mama was telling us how you know, or you were both saying how your grandmother's a very strong woman, and oh, yeah. she's like, when little babies would walk and fall, what, what would grandma say? She says, el piso no pasa, so he's not going anywhere off of the floor. You're not <laughs> beyond the floor. You're, you're not going beyond the floor, so get up, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it moving. Yeah. And then the other part of that is if the baby goes to the floor, it's a little demon. It's going back. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But yeah, that, I mean, just you can see just coming from your family and, and or speaking to your, your mother and to you that uh, quitter, quitter Quitting is not a part it's, of the equation. It's not an option. It is not it's an option. It's either you keep going or you move away and are never heard of again. Oh <laughs> 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 
She's like, that baby fell through the floor. We don't even talk about that one anymore. And, and, <laughs> Shalanda, what about you? Um, I would say, again, probably my family. Like, a lot of my personality comes from both my mom and my dad. And I had strong grandmothers as well. And just, like, my parents are very vocal and opinionated about whatever. And they're very, like stand up for what you believe in and stay strong and so I have gone through some stuff obviously uh, because I'm not probably the typical engineer that is um, expected to be in the workplace so I've had you know comments about my hair and some things like that um, but I just said like that should have nothing to do with my work um, and I continue to stay true to myself because that's what my parents have always taught me stay true to yourself like always be you. How do you deal with these speed bumps? Um, I think over the years I've kind of learned how to manage my stress. There were periods that I did not, during the time I was getting sick, my, the stress that I was feeling externally started to impact me internally. So I've learned since then to really kind of manage just, just my stress and protect my joy, which is really part of the whole year of joy thing. But it really is to surround yourself with people who are happy and are positive and you know kind of keep keep your distance around people who are not because it just I I know that I'm very sensitive to people's energy and I just I'm not trying to get cosmic or anything but it just I'm very sensitive to people who are positive and negative so I need to be I know I need to be around yeah. positive people that's good that you know that about yourself yeah. some people don't even know yeah. that you know you can pick up on yeah. people's or other energy yeah. whatever yes their attitude, yeah. whatever label you want to put on it, you know, sometimes you don't realize that that stuff can seep in. So that's really good. Um, next question is, do you have a successful mantra that you live by? Carpe diem. <laughs> Seize the moment. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, do you write something on your mirror? I'm beautiful, I'm loved, I'm, he was kind, he was smart. He was <laughs> <laughs> Every day I watch the help. <laughs> no, I think um, one that I really like is don't wish for it, work for it, because you don't get anything from just wishing. Like you can wish and wish and wish, but if you're not acting on anything, nothing's gonna get done. So uh, one of the other many things, I like is history. I'm a big history buff. And um, so I actually like a phrase that by Julius Caesar. It's so funny you're asking this. I literally just posted it on my Instagram probably yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Vinny Vinny Vici, which means I came, I saw, I conquered. Now, of course, he probably meant that as far as military battles. But I look at that as anything I'm doing in life. Like, I want to be successful at it. Like, a goal that, you know, a test, going back to school, I want to go there, take care of it, and come out like on the other side, like above it or successful or whatever. So I kind of, I just like love that. Plus I think it's cool to say it. Vinny, say it Vinny, again. Vinny, Vidi, Vici. I really thought you were going to say Vinny, Vidi, Bum, Bum. That's also fun too. Did I say it too fast? I should slow it down. Oh, I love Selena too. <laughs> <laughs> Selena's the best. Yeah. 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 Whatever gets you through the day, you know. What is your mantra that you live by? Year of joy. I mean, really, so that's, uh, just to give you a little bit of background, so I, again, I was coming through being sick, and, you know, there were a couple years ago, and I started to feel that same way again, like getting stressed out, and people's bad energy and everything, and I read Shonda Rhimes' book, Year of Yes. She's the woman behind Grey's Anatomy, to get away with murder, everything. And so, after I closed the last page of the book, I decided, you know what, she, this woman, and I've read a lot of self-help motivational books, but here's a woman who looked like me, who was the top of her game in TV, and was having all these struggles in her life, um, and, I, and I could relate to that. And so I decided, you know what, I'm gonna have a year of joy. And so I'm just gonna do all the things that I enjoy doing that I've gotten away from. And I did, and I started, you know, just, I went on my vacation for my birthday, something very simple, I've never done that before. I took a tap dance class because I always wanted to learn how to tap dance. You know what I mean? So I just started doing things like that and it kind of spread and so that became my little yeah, mantra. I know with Gear of Joy I've seen you take kids to the movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's expanded. It, it, yeah, she really, I, that's something that 
you know, you don't have to be joy sewing to do that. You can do, maybe start off with your week of joy where you're just going to focus on me and positivity and things that make me happy. I think we neglect ourselves a lot. As females, we do because we're doers. We get it done. And people come to us to get it done and expect for us to do it. And we do it with no problem. And sometimes we just, you know, we don't realize that, okay, I got to recharge this battery. And you know what, I will say this, so people, when you are living your, in your path, and your truth, and your joy, whatever, people feel that, and people feed off of that. Because I've had people come up to me who I didn't even know, and it's like, you know what, I'm having a year of joy too, and this is why. And Aww. I'm like, really? I'm like, okay. <laughs> that, is really, that is really awesome. What is your power outfit? And do, do you believe, do you believe in like a lucky outfit? Do you believe in that? I don't do the whole lucky outfit, but I do like lucky accessories. Okay. So I'll wear like a necklace or something that makes me feel like it means a lot to me. So I'm like, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna do good if I wear something. Like that. What's your power outfit, and do you have a lucky charm? So I guess I want to show y'all this beautiful outfit also while we get started because um, this is from Eloquine. This whole look. Um, so I, I know this is about like being professional in the business place, but I also want to show that like curvy girls can rock crop tops too. And when I was actually like looking at my outfits to, to wear, I couldn't decide between this and this because it could be a dress or a coat. So I decided to wear them together. So I thought like, you know, just layers is also a fun thing that I like to do. Um, but to answer the question, um, I don't, I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of like you when it comes to lucky pieces of jewelry. I don't like to fly. And I won't get on a plane if I don't get on the plane with my three necklaces. I have a God necklace, I have an angel necklace, and an S necklace. And they, I, like a member of my family all ended up giving those to me. And I get on the plane with those every time I fly. Um, as far as power outfit, I just like to wear everything, so again, I look at it my accessories as my power piece. When I really want to like walk in a room and have people be like, "Oh, you look great," I usually pick a statement necklace. Well, get it, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, wait, when you go on the plane, you actually physically wear those necklaces? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. They're not like in the bag. Nope, nope. they have I to be on. Bag. I wear I wear all three. And one time, I thought I had like I had made my destination. It was time to go back home, like fly back here and I couldn't find them. Like, I put them somewhere in my suitcase and I was like, I'm not getting on this plane without my dad. <laughs> I have a little secret. This plane is going down! Exactly. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. I'm a little superstitious <laughs> and I was like, where are my necklaces? We're not doing this. <laughs> that pretty much was a, the reaction. <laughs> you yourself, never book a flight with me. <laughs> like ripped them, clawed, uh, cried. It's just not a, I'm trying to get over it, but you, you'll get over it. I need my You'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, Joy, do you have, what's your power outfit? Do you have like a lucky signature, you know, piece of clothing that I get, don't you don't have like a power have? outfit, but most people know me that I'm a jacket girl. I love jackets. I love fitted, like just, I feel... And I think I get it from my mom because it was so funny. So I was taking my mom to lunch, okay, picking her up. She walks out, gets to the car. She's like, oh, no, I got to go back in the house. I have to get my jacket. And I was like, mom, it's 150 degrees outside. She's like, uh-uh. She's like, I don't go anywhere without my jacket. And you know what? I must have get, gotten it from her. So I feel very put to, I don't have a jacket on today, but I feel very put together when I have a jacket on. Wow. What does what your mom, can I ask, do you mind, what does your mom do to where she wants to wear a jacket every day? She was, a, she, she made her own clothes. So oh. she, you know, <laughs> she, she was very, she, everything was very tailored and very put together and tie blouses. And was your mom friends with Tina? Because <laughs> they, it sounds like, you know, just yeah, that whole, yeah, they, Tina, they, they, Tina, Tina Matthews now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, wait, Tina, wait, wait, is she knows her? Knows Lawson. Lawson, Lawson, boom, yeah. that's what it is. Beyonce's mom, y'all. Beyonce's mom. Yes, why are you like y'all don't know? Beyonce's mom. Yeah, You're actually you're pretty good with the family. Yes. We'll lay off that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's Beyonce doing tonight? Okay, <laughs> 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 going to a concert to get her first yeah. for requesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Next question: How do you avoid getting burnt uh, out during your day to day? Like with everything that you have going on, how do you avoid getting burnt out? I just remind myself what we do and why we do it, just knowing that I might have had an impact on a woman and I might have just taken her away from whatever's going on outside of our doors, just is what keeps me going. 
I used to try to do everything, I run around, like do my main job and then run around to a lot of fashion stuff at night and like you know, I'd be up late and I'd have to still be at work by like 7 or 7.30. And then I finally had to realize I'm not in my 20s anymore. I don't have that energy I used to have. And so just realizing that you can't be everywhere at once. You can't be everything for everybody all at once. And really the self-care thing is important. Like your body really will give you signals when it is time to cut back and, say, and take a break. And I actually kind of went through something similar. Um, you know, just like you need to chill. Like, you know, so just recognizing your own body cues and just kind of realize you can't do it all and that's okay. It is okay. And the world will keep on spinning. Yep. <laughs> Um, so when I first had this, I've been in this job, oh God, 14, 15 years. And when I first got the job, I felt the need to prove myself, to be at everything, to cover everything. And that is exhausting because what people don't realize is, yeah, I can go to an event, but then I have to go back to work and write, a, write three or four different stories about the event or an interview or something. So people see me at events and they're thinking, oh yeah, you're part of it. No, I have to go back to work and write, you know. The, so, you know, what I've learned to do is just, I don't, I don't, I, I go to very few events anymore. I just, I don't feel like I have to, yeah. you know. And yeah. also, I think when you give back, it helps fuel, fuel you. So me doing these projects that I do with kids, and even the children's book has helped really fuel that part of me that, you know, needs to be replenished. So that's good, yeah, that's good. So volunteering yeah. and... Volunteering is really important, but then also the power of no. Yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. no. Yes, mm -hmm. and it doesn't, you know. There's a period. Now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. no. Yeah. That that's just it. Yeah. No, and you know, good luck with. You. I'm yeah. sure you'll figure it out. You're very capable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have faith in you, but still, my answer is no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I want to start off with you, okay. because you are just giving us all kinds of layers and. And, and, and just personality and textures. So let me ask you this, how, how does the way you dress impact your work day? And how are you able to still like be you? Like if we see you at work, is this gonna be something totally different tomorrow besides the hair? Are you able to still implement your style when you're at work? Yes, um, that actually is a good question. Um, so I wouldn't wear something like this because we do have a little bit of a dress code. <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't go to work with a crop top. I, I can't wear skirts. Um, I think I maybe push the envelope a little bit more than most people, but for the most part, like I'll I'll go to work. I work like I've changed out the FRCs for most of the day, but I'll go to work in like heels or I'll have a dress on at work. I wear blazers and I change my hair almost daily. Like I I have this hair one day, the next day I have red hair, blonde hair, and sometimes I go with my natural hair, sometimes I don't. And literally, like we have some new engineers that just kind of started our company, and they met me last week. And then they met me again this week, and they were like, your hair is different. And I was like, oh, let me tell you how this works. <laughs> I change my hair pretty frequently, so everyone gets used to it over time. But no, I, I, I would wear, so I wore this necklace today to work. I would definitely wear this. Um, the cool thing about my job is because when I go into the plants, I don't, I can't wear these clothes anyway because we have to have fire protective clothing on. So I can really much wear what I want business-wise to work, and then when I need to go to the field, if I have a dress on, I'm not going to go out there and dress. I can change it to my coveralls, go out, and then come back and put it on. So, how does the way you dress? How does the way you dress affect your work day? You know, I work at a newspaper, and it's you know with journalists and photographers and graphic artists, and they're all. I mean, it's a creative environment, so I don't want to say anything goes, but a lot, a lot of stuff goes that. So yeah. is this something, is this dressed up or is this, this is, I wore this to work today? This is a, well, I like this dress. So I, you know, but I wouldn't wear, you know, like oh, these, okay. like these are not really. And that's really cute. Where, where Thank is that you. This, this, is that custom? Did somebody make that for you? You know what? I don't, I've had it for a long time. That's very pretty. Good. Thank you. Yeah, very these, are, these are kind of It's from Eloquent. But yeah, well, these are Eloquent, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, I work in a different kind of environment. So it's, it's. You know, I, I tend, and I also stand at work. I'm at a standing desk, so I wear flats all the time anymore. I used to wear heels all the time to work. I don't wear heels hardly anymore. Um, and, and so it's, I just, I'm about comfort. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Same question. So I would basically wear something like what I have on right now, and then because I am involved in the store a lot, a lot of the women, you know, they don't know what really like professionalism or like how you should dress and so you kind of set that example and then they're like oh yeah like they're more receptive they think like okay 
yeah, I want something similar to that. So and then also just when you look good, you feel good, and you carry yourself at a very different level than versus when you're just at home in sweatpants. I probably need to come see you guys. <laughs> 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 this is not what I look like every day. Like I, this is a true story. I invited a coworker to my house, and then when we got back to work, she was like, "I have to be honest with you. You know, I shouldn't do this, but you know, you kind of make assumptions based off somebody's how they dress." And I was like, "Well, I dress like I'm homeless." And she's like, "But your home is so beautiful." <laughs> Like, yes, the money goes to the furniture and that's I'm going to come visit you, though, because I want to dress for success. <laughs> okay, so uh, power colors. Do we have a power color this season? And what is your power color? Like, when you put this on, you're like, oh, girl, I'm shutting this room down. Okay? I mean, turn the lights off. It's over. Because I am here and I'm wearing my power color. <laughs> What's your power color? My power color is black. I don't care if it's black on black, black with different colors. It's just black. Black will make you feel good. It's, you can wear it for me any season, any time of day. I'm going to wear it and I'm going to be good. And I think the power color for the season, I would say like emerald green and gem tones. And like not too much earthy, but like elegant earthy. Elegant. Elegant. Like, that. like you're a diamond, but you're finished. <laughs> you've been yes. polished. Elegant, earthy. All right, what's your power color? So I, my colors kind of change. Right now, I'm obsessed with cobalt. I'm that really deep, rich navy blue. I have a navy blue couch. I have navy blue accessories. I made them put the navy blue stone in here. I just like my color right now. Um, but I would say like like a really pop color that I think looks great on me is like a neon color. So I like neon hot pink lipstick. I, well, obviously, I have nude on today, but. Um, yeah, girl, we talking about clothes. I know, but, that, but like I like neon colors too, actually in clothes um, as well. So just like, and I mostly wear like my neons during like you know summer and springtime. But I do like the neon colors against the skin tone. So I think those work. I want to see you in your power outfit. I, I, I want to see the neon. Okay. I want to. I want to see. The power oh, well, color. let me tell you how my neon works. My neon is usually it's like a neon top, like a white blazer, and I would do short. Like I kind of I have like one neon piece. Not like a neon suit. <laughs> and so I like that one pop of color be the, the main thing. Okay. Not full neon. <laughs> because I, mean, I would not put it past you to show up in all I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh. If it, if it, like that neon yellow dress over there that they have in here. I would oh, so, that's pretty. Yeah, that's I would really so pretty. wear that. Like the, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> What's your power color, Joy? Um, wow. You know, I love red and I love red and berries and purple those colors. I am not a blue-green girl. I have very, I probably have one thing that's blue in my closet and nothing that's green. And since you're ever. a fashion editor, what is the, what is the power color for the season? Oh, well, I, I kind of agree with, with you. I mean, I, I write about it, but um, I've seen yellow. I think, you know, every, people ask me that all the time. <laughs> and it, 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 it's almost anything goes a lot of times. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Like, people ask me, what are the trends? Is it whatever you want it to be? A lot of times. Yeah, they really they come like really sick like now. It's almost it's almost harder to find trends by season yeah. now because now people are wearing leather in the summer. Like I before I'm like it's hundred degrees. Yeah. You saw that in Houston? Uh, yeah, I, I've done it and I've seen it. I've I'm kinda technically doing it now. It's of like the last day of summer. Of course it was you pushing the trend. But when it was trending a few yeah, just the the colors also are kinda of like you can see jewel tones now in the spring and summer too. They used to be more like fall. So it's just like everything's crossing over. Interesting. All right, so let's talk about confidence since we have all these beautiful, confident ladies up here. How do you know when you've achieved your true self-confidence as a woman in power? How does it show up in yourself and others when you, how do you know when you've reached that, when you've had that moment of, I'm at, I'm at the top of my game right now? I think I'm constantly just working at self-confidence. I don't think I'm there 100%. But it's also really important to just keep trying because of the women that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. I spend more time with them than my family. And so if, if I don't feel good about myself, I can't make them feel good. So it's very important for me to just keep working on it. Like, if I don't like it, I change it. And if not, I deal with it. Nice. <laughs> I like she gets it from my mama. Your mother would like for you to know that you get your confidence from her. <laughs> She's lying. <laughs> <laughs> and 
ahead, same question. How do you know when you've achieved true self-confidence as a woman in power, and how does it show up in yourself and others? I think I'm, with you, Shayla, I'm still kind of working on it. I know it's going to be hard to believe because I have a blog and I put things out in the public, but I actually suffer from low self-esteem. I uh, have, like, I, I do. It's, it's, it's really weird that it manifests in this way that I'm okay with putting my pictures and stuff online. But I've had uh, low self-esteem issues um, and low self-confidence on and off probably, like, throughout my life. Um, I don't really know where it's, I mean, I think I have a couple reasons why, but just some background history stuff. But, uh, so I think I'm always still working on it. I think there's, I have better days than other days where I'm just like, I look great, or I'm confident, I know what I'm doing at work, I know what I'm doing like here, and then Sundays I'm like, what is going on? So, I think, and I think that's kind of normal for, for most people to kind of have a little up and down. I agree, I think it's something that we're always striving for. I don't never, I don't think you ever feel 100% confident every day. I don't, I don't think anybody does that. And if they tell me that, I think they're lying. I, I think that it, it, you know, it comes in waves and, and, and valleys. And what I've learned to do is when I feel like I'm feeling not confident, find ways to boost that. And make my and usually it's around by the way how I look or how I look in something that you beat yourself up about confidence. Like, God, where did I wear? Why did I wear that? And, like, and then I have to say, wait a minute, hold up. I still got nice legs. Wait a minute, have you seen? <laughs> just saying. That's really cool. Yeah. So whenever you just, I'm sorry. So whenever you start to get a little down and out, just start reminding yourself of well, these are the positives. Yeah. These are the blessings. Right. These are the good things. Right. Also, like, if you don't tell people, no one knows. Because it's a us thing. It's in us. Like, What do you yeah. mean, tell people when like, you're not feeling confident? What, yeah, that we're not feeling so good about, you know, the way we look or a certain part of our body or a certain part of our face. Like, if you don't put that out there, no one knows. So, like, you can hang your nose and then someone will be like, oh, I love your nose. Like, it's so great. And you're just like, wow, really? Like, I was just looking at myself, <laughs> like, like, yeah. judging yeah. myself. But... <laughs> We're harder on ourselves always. And, and I like, think you get a group. Don't know. Yeah, you get a group of women together, and they're all, someone's always going to talk about their hair. Someone's always going to talk about their weight. Someone's always going to talk about some their eyes. Some, there's always going to be some kind of self-loathing something that's going to happen. And so I think it's just as women, we need to really work on being kind to ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, really good, really good. Okay, last question. Then we're going to open Do you ladies, do you have some questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, look, let me ask this really quick so we can pass this microphone. I'm going to come out there and give you the microphone so you can ask your questions. All right, so um, what advice would you give to women about encouraging each other to get the job done together in today's day and age? Like, you know what comes to mind? I'm just going to keep it real with you. The Cardi B and the Nikki thing. Yeah, you know. Um, and if you don't know who Cardi and Nikki are, you ain't missing nothing. I'm just playing. No. So we have, uh, you know, they're two of the biggest women in hip hop right now, and literally just recently had a physical altercation with each other. Yeah, it was in, it was at like one of those upper little fashion, yes. fashion, upper echelon. Yes. Okay, but still, um, you know, so we have two girls at the top of their game. Grown women. Grown women at the, at the top of their game that are, you know, just belittling each other in public and. And just really being negative to each other, and so you know, how do you, how do you just, what do you do to encourage women to work together, and to you know put the pride aside, and how do you, how do you navigate through that? Have you ever had to deal with another woman trying to keep you down, and how to deal with that? Not in the environment that I'm in now, but I just kind of like for me, there's a piece of the pie for everybody. Like everybody can be successful in their own ways. Like you know, just right here, we're all from different backgrounds and we're all successful and we're all doing what we have to do to be successful. But it's like, I'm not going to knock you down you know, just because I might not be at my greatest. Yeah. So it's just important to just, like she said, um, like she said, to be kind. Especially because at Dress, we're all women. Like, all women, all day, every day. <laughs> so you really pick up on each other's energy and it's like, we're always cheering us, ourselves on. Like, just today, everybody was like, oh, I feel so much fun. And it's like, yay! Like, you know, we, like, we really just, like, always are, like, our own little cheerleading squad. That's like, really awesome, because so you don't hear that a lot when it's no, a lot of females no, working together. No, and it's, I was kind of scared, but. <laughs> I would be scared. I would be scared. Like, wait a minute, sorry, what's the men to women ratio? <laughs> Zero to 12. Oh, wait a minute. A lot of us. 
and we're just always just constantly like pushing each other and it's very easy to just go into for example Stacy my manager's office and be like hey I need help this is your you. manager yeah you, they were just back there having a good old time <laughs> laughing and joking and oh you got cool yeah. balls yeah, yeah she's a great boss. <laughs> so we just kind of like just cheer each other on all the time because at the end of the day everyone's going to be successful in their own way and if you choose to not be so positive and nice to other women, it just reflects on you. It just reflects on who you are. And then you all are going to notice it and you're going to beat that person up. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And we're bringing all that negative Don't energy. Don't bring your negative energy. Yeah. <laughs> Same question. Um, so I would say my experience with being around a lot of women is more on my blogging side because I'm still in that male dominated industry. Um, but, uh, you know, being a blogger has become pretty competitive over the years since I started. I started in like 2010 um, when I didn't even think, like, I thought I was the only blogger in Houston to be honest because I hadn't connected with anybody else. And I've gone through the experience of, you know, some people being catty or whatever. And then I just came to a place where, like, you know, I'm just going to try to celebrate everybody and just, like, because the, the thing is, like, you think it's, we are oversaturated with a lot of bloggers right now, but there's still enough of the pie for everybody. And that I feel like also celebrating other people's successes can also lead to your own successes. Instead of having the green-eyed monster and being jealous of other people, why don't you like work, reach out to somebody that you're kind of like, oh, how, do you, how are you working on that? Or just kind of like, hey, congratulations, I saw that you got this new opportunity, that's great. Um, and just celebrating each other, because at the end of the day, like. I think it's better to see people moving up, whether it's you or somebody else, like succeeding in their life, versus trying to bring somebody else down. So, just staying positive with that. I agree. I mean, I've had a lot of, lot of, dealing with different kinds of women in different, in different challenging situations. I'm in a fashion world. Um, I'm the only fashion editor here in Houston, full time. I'm one of a handful in the country. So, and I'm African American. So, I mean, there are a lot of things that I have dealt with over my career in this job. I have learned how to deal with it better. I it used to, I used to take it very personally. I used to get mad. I used, to, you know, I'm not a vindictive person, but it would piss things would piss me off. Yeah. And just like, you know, it, you know, this is like the lack of respect. But I have learned, you know, as I've gotten older, I'm very comfortable. I mean, comfortable in who I am. I'm good at what I do. I love what I do. I feel like I celebrate women of all colors in, in, in my in my work, and I try to do you know good things. I got really kind of recently. So you know, uh, Rita Franklin, her funeral, and I write about fashion, and I write about fashion whether it's red carpet or whether it might be a celebrity event like at Aretha Franklin's funeral, and I happen to write about Ariana Grande's dress, which I thought was inappropriate for the funeral. Now, however, you, however you want to agree with, disagree or whatever, that was my stance as a professional fashion. I'm laughing at you because you're like, oh God, yes, that was what Okay, <laughs> okay. So, and, that, and that's what, but, here, but here's the thing, that's why I wrote. So I wrote, I wrote a post, a post, it didn't even go in the paper, I wrote a post about it, that it was inappropriate, blah, 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 blah. And went back to my job, went back to all the story, and I missed all the bishop and all, all, missed all of that. So by the time I got home, I'm looking at my Instagram feed, and women are blasting me, calling me anti-feminist, calling me how I want to bring a woman down. I mean, just, it was just, I'm like, what the hell? Okay, what just happened here? And so then you it, mean to tell me you going to let this little girl wear this to your funeral? Yeah, wait a minute. And then it got on Twitter, was even worse. And one person even put, who I don't even know, she put, oh, you're for the girls and you're supporting women, hashtag year of joy, not. I was like, oh my goodness. So it, <laughs> it, it really was, it really hurt my spirit. And I was going on vacation the next day and my boss said to me, she says, go on vacation. Don't go on social media. Take a break. When you come back in a week, Nobody's gonna remember this. That is so true. Yeah. And she was right. Yeah. It was a bad dress. Now I had a similar experience with you, and I actually talked to my homegirl Jacqueline about it. Hey, Jacqueline. Hey, Jacqueline. Uh, hey. Uh, I made the same Facebook status <laughs> about the dress, and then I got accused of being a slut shamer. 
Oh yeah, I got oh, that too. That's a title. Yeah. yeah. I said I said the dress was in a rope inappropriate. I never said it. She looked like, I thought it was a cute dress. Just not for the funeral. Yeah, I'm not trying to bring yeah. you down. I'm trying to bring that hemline down. Right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 So, I think a lot of people have different opinions, and I'm okay with people who thought it was appropriate. But I think you should be able to share your opinions sometimes on things like that and not be insulting. crucified. And yeah, <laughs> and, and I, that's what I do. I mean, that's my job as a fashion editor and critic. You know what I mean? So, well, you. It seems like we have a group of ladies with some tough skin who, who have learned how to navigate some very choppy waters. And thank you for sharing all of your knowledge and your experience. And I want to open it up for questions. What questions do you have? And I will come to you with mine, sir. Yes. And so, just say your name, too. Yes, so of can... course. Of course. So my name is Nenda Umelo, and my question is for you, Shalanda, right? Yes. Okay, Shalanda. So how long, I know you've been in engineering um, in the industry for 10-ish years. Mm, yeah, ish. ish. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but like this, you, you grow and progress in your career, especially like as you grow in your industry. And so how long did it take you to feel comfortable like arriving as yourself? Because I'm sure day one you did not show up in gray hair. I, I will sure. tell you that, yeah, I'll tell you the story. So um, I've only had two professional engineering jobs since I graduated, and I always joke about my age, I don't really care. I'm 34, I graduated in 2006, so I had like my first job out of college, it was one company for like six years, and now I'm with my other one, I'm going into my sixth year now. Um, when I interviewed for this new position, I showed up with additional blonde hair, but pulled back in a ponytail, and I had on like more of a, like a, kind of like a top like you have on, like a, a nice design, design top with a blazer and jeans because we are going to do a plant tour. And then when I got to work, I kind of just stayed with that for a little bit because it's always like, I knew eventually I was going to be myself regardless. But for my interview and getting in the door and just kind of filling out the scene, I wanted to make sure like, how are these people? Are they going to be receptive? Are they going to be a little, you know, because... I don't think like modifying a little bit of yourself for your job is like not staying true to yourself because at some point like just kind of with the funeral thing like there is appropriate attire for work just like there's appropriate attire for funeral and I would not wear this no matter how much I want to be like I'm me I'm not showing up to work with this crop top on but I will show up with like some colors or you know a highly printed top so I think it was about like Probably not even very long, like probably a few weeks and then I started pushing the envelope. I think I changed the blonde hair to like, no, 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 just a few weeks from when the Thomas started my new company. I went from the blonde hair to like another hairstyle that was like a little bigger and then I started bringing the colors in. I just wanted to see if anybody would say anything. The first time I wore silver hair to work was kind of the first time I introduced it into my blog. And it's now actually one of my most popular looks um, by my, my readers who really like the, the silver. Um, my boss is like, are you, is your hair purple? And I was like, no, oh, it's silver. And she's like, and I thought she was going to say, I don't think that's for report, but she's like, I like it, you know? And I was like, okay, all right. And so now I was so used to it, I just do it. But yeah, I did not do it. My interview, I did not do it like the first few weeks, so. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. And I have to start off by saying that I'm just like so pleased and excited about this. I've been fishing for an Eloquy store here forever. Aww. And it's not necessarily about just the fashion, but Eloquy is a medium through which we have conversations like this. Wow. And I just think it's just so necessary. So my heart is just so put them together. Uh, my first question is, how did you start to rebrand what a woman who dresses like you do looks like in a role that may not be necessarily um, consistent with what it's been in the past? And what I mean by that is, you know, engineers, female engineers might not have looked like what you what you look like, but you have the same credibility, if not more. And so what was that process for you in rebranding what it looks like to be a highly fashionable woman who is credible um, and this um, in your position? And then my second thing is, as we travel up the road in terms of executive level leadership, I finally hit that place where nobody around the table looks like me, and so I feel this need, what you said, Ms. Sewing, like really spoke to me about having to prove myself all the time, and this past year has been really, really hard because I don't know that I've met the place internally where I feel like I've proved myself, so even though I might have, I might be a commodity to my job now, I'm still like, hey, I know they took a risk on me a year ago, let me make sure they still know it's paying off, but to the detriment of like my married last year, I got my doctorate, and then I got this job, 
And so everything happened at the same time, and I'm still running, but my body's like, girl, we don't have it like that. <laughs> girl, you gotta sit down. <laughs> um, and so if you could just talk a little bit about kind of when you hit that place where you were like, I'm good. I'm good. We can make a right turn and that be a right turn that goes up. And yeah. just do this. Those are my questions. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't really even think about it that way. Like, this is kind of how I've been dressing my whole life. In high school, I wore clothes that were different. In college, I, my mom and my parents just always told me, stay true to yourself. I was like, I'm not going to change to go to the workplace. I mean, like, like trim the edges, you know, but I'm not going to, like, change who I, the core of my being is for that. So... I like that now because a lot of people look at me, they're like, they just think I'm in fashion, and I tell them I'm an engineer, they're like, what? You don't look like an engineer. That's like the first comment I get. And then I'm like, well, what do engineers look like? And I try to think of like, so I was like, well, I guess, I guess, yes, you're right. I do probably don't look like a, a typical engineer. But I didn't really think about it that way, though. Did she answer? Okay, so you had two questions. So the, was that like part one and two? I don't even remember answer? what the quote, last question. What was the question about? The second question? Yes. Was when did you realize that I don't have I don't, I don't know if there was like a pivotal time that I knew. Um, I had people in my life who would say, you don't know who you are, you know, and basically said, you know, you need to stand up and own who you are. Um, and I had friends who did that. And, and, they, and that was good because I was like self-doubt, I'm like blah, 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 blah. And they're like, you've been in this game a long time. And people need to recognize, and that's what and that's what I had friends saying because I was feeling a little unappreciated in my own community. I was feeling unappreciated in, in the black community. I was feeling unappreciated in the fashion world, um, not respected. And I worked really, really hard. And so I think I got to a point where I, I said, you know what? I don't care how anybody comes at me. I gotta know how I how who I am and what I bring to the table. I gotta know that. And I, and I think after after I got sick, after I got healed, I, I said, you know what, I need to take a different approach and know and recognize. So is that when you started telling people, put some respect on it? You put some respect on it. Put some respect on it. Put some respect on it. Put some respect on my name. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have a question about that. So a while ago when you all were asking, when y'all were talking about the empowering, it reminded me of uh, something that I read a while back and I just wanted to share it with y'all. Um, I don't know where I read it or who wrote it or whatever, but I saw queens fix each other's crowns. And, and that always resonates with me because we're all the same. We're all women. We're all, you know, regardless of whether we're all different types, sizes, shapes, colors, um, we're still the same. So just remember that. So fix your fellow queen's crowns. Does anybody else have questions? Good. I mean, it's totally open. Whatever you want to know. You gonna? Shamika, you got a question? Oh, you get. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to piggyback on what she said. Fix each other's crown without letting somebody else know that it needed adjustment. Oh, Ooh, that's oh. good. That is Did good. they say that? Oh, I <laughs> it's been a long time. It's going on my Instagram tonight. I know, it's like, that's like my next role. Okay, I like it. And can I say something? So social media makes us a, a little neurotic, I think. Yeah. I think social media makes a lot of women, you know, question them, how they look, how what they're doing. And I'm active on social media, and I will have to say that it's smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. Y'all, oh, I mean, they smoke really, and it, mirrors it, and light box. So what is it? Light box? Light box. Exactly. Filters, baby. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it is. And you just, meet girls in person. Like, I'm sorry, wait, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> you were What's white that? online. I'm just waiting. <laughs> We have to give each other a break on that because I, yeah. you know, I get, I get caught up in it too, and I'm like, wait, 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 pull back. I don't need to be on Instagram 24 hours a day or yeah. looking at my phone. Yeah. I need to talk to my girlfriend, hear her voice. Let's connect because that's much more important than me. What's on Instagram? Yeah. Much more important. Very true. Yeah. 